Okay, so on to ICSER, which stands for Investigator Initiated Clinical Sequencing Research, um, which we're proposing as a program announcement with Set Aside. So the motivation for ICSER is to follow up preliminary and intriguing CSER findings in settings that have a conceptual link to CSER II, but are um, best done independently. This, um, as Council has, will recognize, is a timely and straightforward way to stimulate investigator-initiated research in genomic medicine and bring um, into the NHGRI tent maybe some different researchers that we haven't seen um, yet in the consortia research. ICSER research would focus on investigator-initiated um, questions and approaches by definition. However, we might expect that the research would fall under uh, one of three broad aims. First, to understand whether and how clinical sequencing impacts disease diagnosis or treatment. Second, to integrate and analyze multiple data types to improve use of genomic information in clinical care. And then third, to investigate function of uh, variants from CSER or CSER II. So uh, this conceptual link to CSER um, um, really um, um, results in examples of research topics that could be proposed. And um, I, I will mention that these are just examples. I think we'd, let, we'd want to let investigators come forward with their best ideas as well, but just to um, walk you through some potential examples. Um, under studies that help us better understand the impact of clinical sequencing on disease diagnosis and treatment, studies um, could be those that investigate diseases with a high di diagnostic yield. So um, as you saw in Dan's presentation, um, CSER investigators uh, report a wide range of diagnostic yields, and um, studying those that are, are um, associated with a high diagnostic yield might help us understand um, better why and how clinical sequencing has been more successful in those uh, diseases. Or um, another example might be examining factors influencing the phenotypic spectrum, for example. So the findings may have been initially overlooked in the initial clinical sequencing study. For the second um, broad aim, integrating and analyzing multiple data types, um, those could include uh, computational and health economic approaches to identify diseases that are likely to benefit from clinical sequencing, or integrating other data types such as family history, environmental, or om other omics data uh, to improve clinical validity. Under investigation, a function of CSER2 variants, studies might include the annotation of existing functional data to inter improve interpretation um, in the clinical workflow, or elucidating function of variants identified in CSER or CSER2. Um, we spent a little bit of time talking about the distinctions between investigator-initiated and CSER2, um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about that. So we, compared to CSER2, we envision that iCSER would involve smaller, um, responsive, and more flexible research settings. Um, in studying targeted projects relevant to clinical sequencing, we would expect investigators to be able to describe their relevance beyond the specific genes or diseases proposed. Such research would not require substantial infrastructure and the consortium-wide approaches that would be needed for CSER II. In fact, we would expect the ICSER to operate largely independently of the CSER II investigators and their institutions. We are proposing that ICSER grantees meet once a year amongst themselves. The attendance at this, the CSER II meetings would, be not, would not be required, um, but they would be um, invited to come. And compared to CSER II, the ICSER would not focus as much on LC as those topics are supported by an existing and separate uh, program announcement. So the ICSER is proposed as a program announcement with set aside using the R01 mechanism. We envision a one-time PIS timed with the CSER II concept. Each award would um, um, be encouraged to come in with up to a 300K direct cost limit. This is the size of an average R01 for up to a, a four-year project period. Up to six awards are proposed for funding with review done by the Center for Scientific Review. We're also talking with SBIR staff at NHGRI to see if we might be able to coordinate with their program announcement with review, or PAR. Um, this is the small business grant mechanism for which we have already an existing set aside. Um, and we could also leverage the same panel as the existing um, R01s. So this was a shorter presentation because we wanted to give you sort of the, the broad strokes um, of what we envisioned as aims. Um, the investigator-initiated ideas would obviously um, come forward as, as investigator-proposed ones. But we did want to um, point out that in discussing how best to implement um, the, the stim stimulating our investigator-initiated portfolio, we had um, a, an active discussion among staff, and there will, were a number of alternative um, options we could have pursued. Um, so we would appreciate your feedback on things like the scope of the suggested topic areas, the relationship to CSER and CSER II. Um, we've proposed this as a PAS that's specific CSER II, but I know a couple of you have already um, you know, raised the possibility of having a broader genomic medicine um, funding opportunity. 
um, you know, comments on logistical aspects such as single versus multiple sheet dates or the size and the length of the grants would be welcome. Um, Carol raised the um, idea of having planning grants for um, investigators to um, have kind of a smaller limited time to plan for uh, potentially larger efforts afterwards. So I think that might fit well here with ICESER. Um, and then as I mentioned, the small business mechanisms is one area that does not actually require a formal council vote, but which we felt was um, very easy to um, coordinate with our existing um, efforts. So um, we have the same four discussants. Um, Lucilla, Shanita, Dan, and Bob. So why don't we start with Lucilla? Yeah, so I guess I, guess I had Dan's my phone. Uh, oops, four. Uh, I think from, from the questions that you raised here, it, it seems to me that the size is a little bit on the small side, that it, it could be uh, bigger, even if it's at the expense of funding one less mm -hmm. on the uh, Caesar two. You're talking about Individual the 300,000 Yeah, 300,000 okay. seems small because depending, you know, on what you're going to need to do, uh, the thing might get more expensive. Uh, and uh, again, reiterating what I said before, I think it should be the broader genomic medicine instead of um, a link to Caesar II necessarily. I think it's important to include the option for it to be a planning grant because I think that there are institutions that have nascent programs that could use this mechanism to develop the plan for larger applications. So I think that's really important. I, but overall, I'm enthusiastic about the proposal. Okay. Thank you. Um, Dan? <coughs> well, I think I already said what I, what I, what I said, thought before. So I'll I won't repeat it, but to say that, I, well, maybe I'll. But just to, to say that there are lots and we're at the point now in this field where there are lots and lots and lots of good ideas. And um, I, I, I don't have a strong feeling about whether this should be I Caesar or a much broader program announcement. If it's I Caesar. It's not me. If it's I Caesar, then uh, the advice to staff would be to keep a very, very close eye on the kinds of applications that you get. And if it turns out you get lots and lots and lots of wonderful applications, then that would accelerate the pathway towards a, a much broader program. And it's possible. Great. And um, Bob? Yeah, the, the only thing is I'd like to just affirm that having a, uh, an ability for people who are not necessarily in the field to bring in their ideas, but with those ideas, um, uh, somehow uh, fused with or at least interacting with that of the current Caesar so that um, we get new ideas without them being um, completely unlinked from the overall program objective. But I, I would love to see new ideas of people that we haven't, we don't know about or things we've, that people haven't even thought about because as my neighbor said so clearly, um, best ideas are not necessarily going to be coming from the people sitting around this table. Thank you. Other council members? Carol? Yeah, so I concur that, that I, I would go with fewer awards and more funds per award. I think that's a really important suggestion that just came in. Um, and I also like um, having the PA be broader genomic medicine, but making sure that these investigators are included in Caesar. So I don't know if that changes what you call it, or just make it clear in the I Caesar announcement this is really to be broad. But I really do think it's important to have investigators funded under this be integrated somehow into these other initiatives. I think that's key. Yeah. Um, so I I don't I, I do want to. Um, comment that I don't think one precludes the other. We could, this was our way of, you know, kind of envisioning getting some investigator-initiated research funded quickly. We could imagine a companion one, um, you know, later on um, as you mentioned that. Um, so it wouldn't be necessarily mutually exclusive, but I, I think that's, that's good feedback. Yeah. That's and planning grants don't need to be as much, right? So if, if planning right, right. grants actually gets folded into this, right. you would want a different cap, I think, for planning grants versus uh, R01 style grants. 
Yeah, yeah. just real briefly, I just wanted to make sure if this goes through and the program announcement goes out to the ICs, or I, I would just take great pains to try to, to specify that these are examples, right? Yeah. Because I, I think that if we do, which I'm very much in favor of, if we want to harness the, the brilliance of the community, um, because like Bob says, we don't, we don't know enough, um, we have to make sure they don't feel constrained to submit something that they think needs to be pounded into a specific leader community. Um, so, Les and Val think I'm arguing a different point. I'm completely supportive of uh, the investigator-initiated approach, and so it's not a question of whether to, to do something along those lines. It's whether the expectations are, are aligned here. And it just seems to me, as I read the objectives here, is, is to Dan's point. These could be Caesar or any clinical genomics program. They don't really seem to align to Caesar. That may be fine, but but that is how it, how it reads, and people could easily go off and develop methods that don't capture the richness of the patient-centered approach of Caesar. And, um, it just seems to me that that's, um, whether it's eMERGE, Caesar, or something else, and I think you were going the same place. And, and again, it, it may be fine. That's point one. And point two, while I've got the podium, functions slipped into this, and we we haven't talked about function in the context of uh, Caesar, and so I'm wondering where that's. I think it, it comes from, um, a number of discussions we've had, not just as part of CSER, but it's evident that from CSER there have been a number of you know, pathogenic or variants with uh, uh, variants of uncertain significance that could be followed up for function, perhaps um, as, as they relate to therapies or, or other um, diagnostic implications for patients. Is, is that what you mean? So I completely agree with that, but okay. we're, we're straying from CSER, right? So we're, we're broad. Uh, uh, where's we're, the we're tie into in CSER? Got awards yeah. In general, for clinical genomics, I, which is which is fine, but it's not CSER. That's true. I think what, what the tie into Caesar was the um, identifying um, function of variants identified in Caesar. So I, I agree with you that that does include a much broader understanding. Isn't the solution to this? Sorry. No, just isn't this, isn't one way of thinking about this just to, to make sure that the language in the RFA clearly ties this particular part of the genomic medicine portfolio to Caesar and its overall goal to the Caesar program, and 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 that's not to preclude. Uh, other investigator-initiated grants under other mechanisms, and I'm not sure where those other mechanisms are and how well-funded they are established, for example. So, so I, I, I think that, uh, yeah, you do run a risk if you're starting to propose, you know, wide-scale mutagenesis and zebrafish to, to try to decide whether, you know, variants that you've identified are functional. That's probably not part of this, this program. Yeah, I think it's a very important initiative, but it's not, probably not part of this program. So, so I, I think the answer is just to write the RFA in a way that would sort of allow you to say, well, this particular activity is Caesar, and it's and it's offshoots, and and it, in order to qualify, you have to meet these these kind of criteria. And I hate to say this, but staff should decide whether something is responsive or not, or the study section should decide if something's responsive or not. But there is this element of responsiveness if something comes out of the left field that's clearly unrelated. Right? I guess you could use that as an argument. But it depends on the language you use. Yeah, so I think you're hearing different recommendations because mine was to actually make it, make it less Caesar and you right. oh, yeah. are to make it more Caesar. Well, I, I think whatever it is, it has to be explicit. I, mean, that, that's, that's, that, I think that's my recommendation. If we, if we decide that we want to have a broad program in genomic medicine, it, you know, RFAs, that's, a, that's not the discussion we're having, but if that were the way we would do it, then the RFA should say this is a broad program, will entertain zebrafish mutagenesis and, and individual patients and what have you, and then and, and then you can well, well, I think write it the way you want to. It's still clinical sequence, so it right. will be more human-based anyways, but I think just um, making it too specific to Caesar kind of limits and you might not even get enough uh, good applications. Uh, I mean, the other way you can have both. Only one way to find it. Maybe I could I could just comment. The, the, the discussion that you're having is a discussion that was mirrored within the staff, and, and we went around a lot about should this be a general program for investigator-initiated uh, research in genomic medicine, or should it be more specific? This is the first one of its kind that we have done, and we really need to get some experience with it, I think, before we go much more broad. 
And so, so this was an opportunity to really try to, to say, gee, there are some you know, clear things that have been identified here that could be followed up or pursued or, or expanded or broadened in, in investigator-initiated research. That's where the function came from, and we hear you that that's not as much clinical sequencing, and so we have lots of programs that are ex exploring function. We can take that out. Um, but I, I think it would be very helpful to us to sort of dip our toe in this water first and, and see what we get for something that is a little more related to one of our specific programs and then see how that, how that comes out. If we get nothing, you know, that'll be an answer for us as well um, and we can go broader then on the next one. We wouldn't have an I emerge and an I ignite and, and you know, I separate one. Um, but, but I think we do need to try one that's a little bit on the small side just to see what we get. So that's, that's sort of where we've come down. So, I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. This hadn't occurred to me until this discussion. Um, I think it is too narrow to have one of the aims, the investigation of the function of putative pathogenic genomic variants identified in those. But I do think that given the magnitude of the problem of determine how to determine variants and whether they're deleterious, whether they're pathogenic, one could just broaden that to say investigation of the pathogenicity of VUS, or something along those lines, because that is a central challenge, if not the central challenge in genomic medicine, and it would be, you know, people might come up with, with uh, uh, approaches that look at these variants that don't just rely on function. I mean, you wouldn't want to rely on function for that. Could I get comments about uh, eligibility requirements? Should this be wide open? Anyone reply? To restricting it in any way. Should we have CSER uh, funded investigators apply to this as well? Ooh. I I understand that. I wanted counsel to comment on it because we hadn't heard anything about that. Did I hear something? The whole intent. The only people from the University of Minnesota. <laughs> the whole <laughs> I think, yeah, I think everybody, everybody. From, from all 49 states except North Carolina should be allowed to apply. <laughs> well, you know, he started it. <laughs> no, I, I think the whole intent is to, is to broaden the definition. Yeah, it's very broad. I'm not hearing the answer to your question. So can we can we ask uh, counsel because programmatic balance is something that we always do consider are are you comfortable with if we had you know 12 applications from some unnamed university in North Carolina that we we might not fund all of them um, and and we usually put some some you know issue of of balance or geographic dispersion there. Intake would be wide open, right. Right. especially for this program. I mean, because I you know. Despite what Jim might say, it's not totally representative of, of, the, of all 50 states. But don't you think CSER investigators are going to have a distinct advantage in the, in the review process? So would you propose a mechanism that, that if you have a CSER site, actually, but you won't have a CSER site because you're still competing for the CSER too, so you won't even know if you're a CSER site. So what we have done in, in the UDN and other programs is to say you can't be awarded for more than one RFA. So, so one institution would not have a general site and a diverse site. One institution wouldn't have one of the others. Yeah. 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 So the UDN was set up so that it couldn't have the same PI, but multiple sites could be awarded to the same institution. So, so one way of, of trying to ensure this is wide open, which I think we all agree it should be, um, in three, it, and I had suggested broadening it to investigating uh, determination of pathogenicity, it doesn't have, you don't have to say identified in CSER and CSER too, right? There's, we've got public databases and we've got variants, we've got, you know, there's ClinGen out there, there's all kinds of people doing stuff outside of CSER and CSER too. Sure doesn't have to be within CSER. So I feel like, so I didn't, I don't understand what the feedback was on the last point. I feel like, 
a discussion, I'm going to, so I'm going to ask explicitly, do people think we should restrict either at the investigator level or the institution level who can get more than one of these awards, both across the three Caesar RFAs and also considering this investigator initiated thing? Do people have strong opinions on that? Uh, no I, I, I was in favor of restricting. I think we, we, we talked about that before and I still believe that um, we should be trying to encourage people to apply who are not part of large Caesar consortium just as long as they will meet with them if awarded and that we'll have some interaction. So, so, that's so wait, to clarify, Bob, you mean restricting it by excluding them. I mean, in other words, right. if they're currently, if, if, they right. if they get an award for one of the main, right. they are excluded from right. getting an I Caesar right. award. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, I disagree. I, I think it should be everyone. And then the reviewers should be told, just select what's best. Then you do your programmatic afterwards, but, but I don't think it should be um, restricted, especially by an institution. Yeah. I mean, it's, it could be someone well, else. Uh, yeah, I guess this, uh, boy, this is getting complicated. I, I, I think we all agree it should be wide open for people to be able to apply, but I, um, I think we could run into real trouble if we don't exclude awards to, you know, you might end up with one institution with like four of these, which would be kind of crazy, right? Um, Jim, so that discussion is, is kind of premature. Okay, I just want to, who's, who's getting in the door is, is what I was getting at. And we've heard two different opinions, which is fine. Anybody else want to offer an opinion? It seems reasonable to me to exclude the Caesar uh, people because they already have funding for the, in this general area and, and presumably a big advantage, but uh, it seems to me a mistake to exclude people, other people from the same institution from applying. Well, you know who, is a, who has a Caesar award before, you're, you, before you decide? Before you decide they'll all come at the same time. That goes back to Terry's point exactly. where you know, we, have, we would have to make it clear that we wouldn't expect one award to the same institution or however we phrase that. The same PI. Or the same PI. Yeah. Do that because these would be done at the same time. I, I, I think from a perception point of view, um, uh, I think if, if, if you don't say that you can only get one of these RFAs, then the people that you probably want to try to get one of the investigator awards are going to say, you know what, I'm not going to have a chance for this. This, this is all going to go to the people that are already embedded in this program. Um, so, I mean, that's a that's an unfortunate re reality. I mean, ideally, it should be open to everybody, and you know, it's the best ideas win. And I agree, that's all. That that's that's the most wonderful, ideal way to do it. But I think you're going to discourage people. I just, uh, I agree with everything Bob says. <laughs> Bob, <laughs> anything else you like? Uh, how do you like Tchaikovsky versus Shostakovich? Grant, please. Um, so I think there was language in the recent ENCODE RFAs that, uh, there were five that went out. It said something to the effect of, Anyone can apply, but funding will take into account whether PIs would be funded under other RFAs. So it's not necessarily excluding people from getting funded, but it's sort of leaving that opening that it's not, they don't have a necessary advantage. But, but in this case, I mean, we already said we're not going to let the same PI get grants from more than one, but here the, the uncomfortableness had to do with institutions. So I guess the language then would be, Anybody can apply, but we will be looking for institutional diversity. Are we allowed? No, okay. No, not, not institutional oh. diversity, just. Well, then we would just, yeah. then that's fine. Then we just adjudicate it when it comes in. That's easy. Okay. Um, I'm wondering about the size of these things. Where did you come up with a 300K cap? That was the average cost of an, of an NIH grant. We felt that was a, a reasonable one. What would you suggest? I'm just wondering if you took into account how many patients you could sequence with this or things like that. You no. It, the expectation isn't isn't necessarily that they would be doing a large amount of sequencing in these grants. It would, it, you know, they could be doing a whole host of things building on that kind of research being done in the, in the full season. Yeah, that's exactly right. 
Mark wasn't the only one that was concerned about the size of these grants. Who what was it, Lucilla? You, what were, you, what was your concern? Uh, my concern is if the intent is to get a whole lot of people to apply, then you have to have, uh, you know, a, a good um, uh, reasons to to go for it. And sometimes it will cost more than two hundred. We know that. I, I think by the same rationale, you would be limiting the people who will apply or the kind of ideas that will come up. In, in the, actually, I wanted also to uh, clarify, I wasn't uh, saying we should have fewer than this. I, I think we should have more R01. We could have one less of the, the, the speaker itself to make up for those. I would agree that imposing a 300k cap seems low. I mean, you could you could uh, sort of indicate that the target mean is around 300, but I think that giving people flexibility is good. Um, I mean, that, that's you know that's a relatively modest sized grant. I, I agree with that, especially with regard to how expensive it is to interface with clinical services. No, I, I thought Jonathan's comment was you could say that we expect the median to be X, but you would accept you know, proposals of. What, what's the current know. cap? Isn't well, the current five, cap 500? Yeah. So why not just. Over, like over four, oh, I mean, over 500, they have to get yeah, program approval. Yeah. So I know, I know. You're just cheap, John. Understandable. Okay, I think we've had a good discussion. Um, we have heard diversity of opinion, and staff will take that under advisement, but it's time to vote. So can I get a motion to accept the, um, thank you, Val, and a second. All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstention? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you can I just make a comment that um, I think, I don't know, this will be embarrassing. I think Lucia did a really good job Pre, the pre-council meeting, uh, the telephone call, call we had, very well prepared, very clearly written, um, compared to some of the previous experience.